Henry, thank you for your time. Welcome to the show. And um, thank you for um, yeah, being so spontaneous. Uh, during these times, we want to do some interviews to keep people um, informed about what pest management is doing in our sector and you personally are doing within the current crisis that we are experiencing. So, um, Henry, fire away. Let us know how, how have you experienced the past month and uh, what are you doing with your business? Uh, what is SEPA doing? And how did you get the UK government to approve uh, 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 pest controllers as key workers? Oh, well, yeah, firstly, well, thank you, Daniel, for inviting me. Um, appreciate it. Uh, I think um, before we start, I, I, I should say that I'll, I'll be speaking as Henry, as the owner of my own business, not necessarily as SEPA president. Mm. Um, but as SEPA president, you know, anything that I do say is, is, uh, is, is my own opinion, not necessarily that of SEPA. So uh, just so we sort of clarify okay. those boundaries. Um, the, um, obviously, it came as a shock, I think, to everybody um, how rapidly this, uh, this crisis hit us. Um, I think yeah. many of us were probably sitting there thinking this is a this is another this is a world away. Um, it's not really going to affect me too dramatically. Um, and for me personally, um, I didn't really actually grasp the seriousness of it until we had simply had the lockdown announcement. Um, and that lockdown announcement. Um, uh, obviously varied depending on which country you're in. We'd seen how it yeah. happened in Italy, which I think was probably the first of the European countries to really experience it. And then maybe Spain, I can't remember the actual um, uh, chronological order. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly from the UK uh, perspective, when you actually drilled into the detail of it, it seemed fairly clear that as a business, as a pest management business, um, we need to operate on people's sites. So we were largely and still are largely exempt from the, the issues regarding travel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we simply can't operate our business without traveling to sites. Um, yeah. So in that respect, um, the, uh, the issues for us are probably a lot, a, a lot less than, than many of our clients mm -hmm. um, who uh, perhaps haven't got that luxury uh, mm -hmm. whereby they can simply, you know, um, travel to them so um there was a lot of uh, initial sort of uh, panic i would say amongst uh, amongst the staff who worked mm -hmm. for me you know they're obviously worried for the jobs and everything else but but we we uh, we quickly established um uh what clients we felt were uh, seriously at risk in terms mm -hmm. of um us not being able to access it those that were completely shut down and we made approaches to all of them on the basis that um yes whilst uh, whilst the lockdown is here and whilst obviously their own businesses aren't opening, I'm talking particularly about pubs and restaurants and, and ho well not hotels, some hotels, um, mm -hmm. as we're all well, well aware and has already been said, a lot of um, uh, 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 pests don't realise that there's a lockdown on there and, and, and those businesses are still at risk. Um, so in reality, from my own business point of view, uh, we were quite uh, low exposure to those types of um uh, uh, businesses so as I mentioned you do a lot of food manufacturing and agriculture right yes uh, our business is particularly uh, focused in on that how always has been it's not always a favorite we're not a, we're not a city center based business a lot of our operation yeah. is 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 on the periphery of cities manufacturing yeah. side of things or in yeah. the field so, mm -hmm. so and that hasn't that ha in fact they're, they're seeing a boom if anything mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um yeah yeah. What do you think about uh, the tolerance and sensitivity of people towards pests? I mean, pest control is called pest control because there was a pest back in the days and we now have a pandemic. It's not called pandemic control. But still, do you think there is kind of a link and people are going to get more awareness for our segment? Um, I, I think over, over, the, over the decades, there's, there's become the people's standards are always um, uh, in terms of perceived hygiene and, 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 and the environment that they want to work in is always improving, if you want to call it improving. Mm -hmm. People's expectations are much higher. Um, I seriously doubt that just because we're having a pandemic um, that people's tolerance of pests is going to suddenly drop on the basis that, you know, oh, well, um, uh, I, kn I know I've got a rat running around, but there's also a pandemic, so I'll tolerate the rat because there's a yeah. pandemic. I yeah. really don't it's see that free, happening yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Um, I, I, I've seen a lot of sort of people trying to link um, 
uh, um, maybe even prey on people's fears regarding the pandemic yeah, and, true. and pests and everything else. But, uh, you know, uh, and I mean, we have to be careful as an industry that we don't use this as some sort of uh, yeah. manipulative tool to try and create hysteria yeah. when it's not there. But um, in terms of um, uh, pest management, then no, I, I don't. I don't see anybody's changing their attitudes towards um, towards mm. um, if that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent, Henry. Um, what is your personal opinion as the CEO and owner of uh, your own pest control management uh, firm? Do you see a lot of other businesses, uh, people that whom um, I assume you speak with uh, quite frequently in the UK or from some other countries? Do they fear insolvency or bankruptcy? Um, is that a topic that we're gonna um, that is gonna hit our sector in the next couple of months, uh, or is it just for a few and for some others not? Uh, is it has it something to do with uh, can you separate between the small medium sized companies that are maybe you know founder and CEO Henry Mott like yourself and versus the bigger ones who have private private equity firms behind them? Are they fa uh, facing a more risk towards cash flow uh, uh, um, uh, issues and stuff like that? Okay, that, well, that, that's a, a wide range of subject. I think yeah. if I start right at the beginning, um, uh, speaking for myself, my attitude in terms of you know this 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 crisis was was um, how can I keep my business going, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I mentioned that earlier, you know, looking at my portfolio, looking at my clients, yeah. trying to um, persuade them the importance of pest control. That hasn't gone away, in my opinion. Um, why I was quite surprised, I don't know whether this has happened in, in other countries, but certainly I, I think some of the financial packages that were being offered, um, some, certainly some of the smaller enterprises actually have seen this um, uh, it, it, in a quite bizarre way. It, 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 they're, all, they're very quick to shut up shop and say, oh, no, you know, there's a, there's a the, the, you know, stay at home, protect the NHS. I'm sure it's a similar message in every country. Um, uh which kind of sends a mixed message to me to clients where you're saying oh yeah you know stay at home protect the nhs what i actually do for you isn't important isn't mm. key um uh, yeah, okay. and that to me is a mistake and i think yeah. some and i think i think some some businesses are probably far too quick quick to shut down um mm -hmm. and they may well find that um when things do open up that they that, that <laughs> their clients might wrongly think well you know do i need this service if it's if it's not so important <laughs> yeah um that you could just shut down and not bother attending um yeah. i think those are probably some of the businesses that are most at risk um that, that have just literally sat back and thought oh well i'll just ride this out rely on the government packages um pay my staff or whatever and and then when it's all over i'll just start back and everything will be back to normal yeah um, if anybody, if anybody's sitting there who's been in that position, I would, my advice to them would be have a quick rethink about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, when 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 you move up to uh, the small medium sized enterprises, um, who uh, maybe they uh, maybe they unfortunately might have more of a focus in in an area that's been more affected by this. So I'm thinking possibly those businesses that operate in city centres. Um, City centres, as we know, are, 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 are these days they don't contain much in the way of manufacturing. Most of them are, are, are basically uh, um, uh, areas of entertainment, be they restaurants, clubs, yeah. pubs, mm -hmm. cinemas. That can't one even mm -hmm. those anymore. They don't really exist. But yeah. so, so I would I, I would imagine that those sorts of businesses that are focused in there are probably um, uh, more worried or have more difficulties. Um, getting access into buildings but it's important that they try as we said earlier the pests yeah. don't realize that there's a pandemic on so my, my advice to them if they're doing it already would be make the case make the case strongly if your customers have got any intention of reopening um then they they don't want to reopen to a rat infested um cockroach infested whatever infested <laughs> building mm -hmm. um so uh, if you want to take that aspect and then you've probably got those businesses that which I would count myself in as a small medium enterprise that operate in a more agricultural uh, food processing manufacturing area uh, and if anything we've probably seen um, uh, I wouldn't say we, uh, a boom but we've certainly not seen any issues yeah. um, and longer term I don't see any issues with getting paid that's the mm -hmm. other thing as well is that um, you know you, you might be trying to get in and try to do your job but you've got to be very aware that that um, 
uh, you, the, 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 when people come out of this, if their businesses aren't viable, the work you've done, especially if you're offering credit terms, you want them to get paid for. So um, I would I would advise anybody that's running a business to to focus in on their their uh, their credit days, what mm-hmm. have you. Uh, you then mentioned about the larger organisations. Um, so and those, uh, that, yeah. Well, th- there's there's obviously there's obviously some large pest control organisations in every country that are still privately owned. Mm-hmm. They well, probably means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, so they're going to have a broader spread of clientele, so right from the city centre where they're going to suffer, but they'll also have you know uh, businesses that won't be. So I'd imagine that those will probably see a shrinkage. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you know, I, I would expect that um, they'll bounce back reasonably quickly. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about multinationals, you know, <clears throat> I don't look at the balance sheets of multinationals. I don't know how they're financed necessarily, but I would be worried if I was one of those businesses that was um, heavily privately equity funded. Um, on the uh, uh, private equity relies on, on on growth, relies on economic growth. Um, and if we do go into a, a recession, which I think is almost inevitable, if it's any sort of long term recession uh, on a global scale, particularly if you're a global company, that's obviously got to be concerning. Yeah. Um, growth is always heavily linked with yeah. uh, debt, and uh, for debt, you need cash flow. And if cash flow decreases, it uh, might be a difficulty. But uh, I'm also sure that these people have more uh, financial intellect and uh, staff than we do. Uh, so maybe they're going to get some uh, very uh, decent uh, um, government lo- uh, loans or whatever that are going to be supported at zero interest. But uh, that's another story that's very finance. Um, I want to speak a little bit about SIPA and about um, our, how is Europe doing? I mean, is the UK, just uh, to wrap it up, was, uh, I've seen that in LinkedIn popping up. People were crying for help. Please get us uh, approved as key workers, get us assigned. We want to work. Pest control is key industry. And I, I've seen uh, your yeah. post with a screenshot of the email then of the government and of uh, DIFRA. And you, got, you, got, you really managed to, to get uh, uh, pest control in there. So a huge thank you. How... Did that go? And, and first of all, how did you experience and manage that in the UK? And maybe then secondly, uh, what is, what's happening in the other countries of Europe? Okay. Um, well, yes. Um, c- key worker status, um, as far as the UK goes, um, as I alluded to earlier, it, it's not, it wasn't so important as in terms of actually being able to do our jobs because that's never actually been yeah. the issue, um, uh, tra- traveling. But th- there were some smaller benefits around having key worker status um, to do with um, childcare that, um, you know, uh, pest control oh, operators okay. can, can put their children into a school if, because they're mm-hmm. classed as a key oh, worker. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, which was, um, uh, you know, which is important to some people, not necessarily all. Um, but for, for, for me, um, really, the, the, the driving force be, be behind getting key worker status um, uh, as to why, why I personally wanted it for my industry, is it's, um, uh, it, it's recognition as much as anything else, the important work we do. Um, uh, you know, we, we as a country, um, quite rightly so, you know, uh, as I think across Europe are, are out there supporting frontline workers, they're key, you know, key workers in the NHS. And I wouldn't for one second want to compare what we're doing to what they're doing. Um, you know, uh, the risks that they're putting themselves are, are infinitesimally higher than, 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 than pest control people operating. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I, 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 I don't think it's right or proper that we should compare necessarily the two Mm -hmm. but the services that we do provide are absolutely essential for operations to carry on Um, human health uh, you know diseases and viruses are spread by pests also i mean not not particularly the coronavirus but still they uh, form a really strong risk towards human health when it comes to food and pharmaceutical uh, produce um, um, that are being brought into the system and distributed to people so yeah yeah, uh, exactly that. Um, you know, and, and um, uh, you can't run a hospital if you if you haven't got running water. Um, yeah. But equally, you know, uh, you probably wouldn't want to run a hospital if you got a rat running around there. You know, so 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 everybody has their part to play. Um, in terms of getting that key worker status, um, I just see it as 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 as, as my. Um, uh, say my role but uh, you know I, I i've been president of sepa for quite a long time sepa as you're probably aware has been um quite um 
uh, successful in uh, in improving its image and its recognition across Europe yeah. um, in, in various ways. And I just thought, well, it, it, it makes sense for me as, as, as an individual to write to our own government and speak to my own government. Knowing how to do it is important. Um, uh, every, every political system in every country is no doubt different, but the way it works in the UK is very much um, through your local uh, member of parliament, your local mm. representative, trying to go direct to government. Um, you, you, you get, you'll, you'll get the, uh, the standard rebukes. It's like every, it's lobbying. You need to know how to do it. The, only, the best way of lobbying is, is having somebody on the inside who supports you. Um, they're the people with the contacts. They're the people who can make your case. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's what I did. And that's why I think I was probably more successful than perhaps um, some, some other people who were trying cool. uh, in different ways, which leads me on, you know, quite neatly on, onto what SEPA does and, and, and how that now mm. operates and how that through the new secretariat and the team we work is yeah. that you know, we, we, we're very conscious of how we're getting our message across um, and, and how we actually um, achieve that. And it, it, you need people on the inside supporting you. It's no good just standing on the outside mm. um, shouting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, does that answer it? I, I, I kind of... Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Uh, no. One, yep. one more specific question I have um, would be, is there um, any member of state of SEPA, I don't know, maybe Italy or uh, uh, Portugal or anything like that, that are still suffering with being, um, uh, uh, yeah, being assigned as key workers? Or do they have more bankruptcies? Do they have more struggles? Do they have higher pest issues now given the the heat wave that is hitting Europe um, uh, when, when I think of some more southern countries yep. that are having yep. uh, more insect problems than, for instance, the UK or uh, Germany? Uh, okay, right. Shameless plugs here. Um, when, <laughs> when we, when we st when we, uh, when, when this first crisis first hit, I had a, uh, a long conversation with the Secretariat and we decided that as a, as an organization, CEPA as an organization, um, uh, in these incredibly uh, difficult times that we should completely focus our efforts on supporting pest control um, uh, members and stakeholders ac across Europe. So we created a knowledge hub, which yeah. um, anybody that watches this who hasn't been onto it, go onto it. There's a yeah. lot of information across yeah. Europe. Yeah. Um, touching on really. particularly exactly what you said. Um, uh, we have a uh, 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 an area where... Um, every country's status as far as key worker is listed and within that um, link to that is how those countries that achieve key worker status got it um, see so those countries that haven't got it can always use that knowledge to see how they could maybe uh, uh, get it so off the top of my head at the moment there is obviously the UK as we discussed it Italy Portugal Spain Austria uh, they're the ones I can think off the top of my head that have full key worker status. Mm. Um, I'm not sure you do in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. You do. Oh, there you go. Uh, Germany then. Yeah, great. Um, so um, uh, uh, th that's, you know, th th that, that's a situation we're in as far as key worker status goes. And what was, this, what was the other part of the question you asked me? Uh, basically, it was um, uh, um, asking uh, whether some countries uh, that are maybe not assigned as key workers now face uh, as to the strong weather conditions, you know, with the heat waves, ah, etc. Yeah. Now um, uh, looking at huge pest issues because they're not allowed to work. But uh, yeah, I think that's an obvious one. Uh, most of them are assigned as key workers. Well, uh, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, you, you say it's. I mean, what we're, what we're working on at the moment, and we've actually uh, it's in the process of. Um, have actually been published. It's not been signed off yet, but um, uh, there's obviously um, the current status and what we're doing status, but what's the future? Um, and how is pest management um, going to be um, uh, involved in rebuilding and helping, uh, you know, governments and countries ac across yeah. the globe come out of this? Well, we've been looking at various, various concerns, um, both in the short term and the long term. In the short term, um, it's certainly clear in some countries, and we've got anecdotal evidence of, of this, uh, where, where cert certain systems are breaking down, particularly yeah. around waste collection and stuff like this, which is causing short-term pest problems. Yeah. Um, and how, how we as an industry can, can you know, will advise and talk about how, how we can help there. But the longer term, um, 
if you've got a street and you've got there, you know, restaurants and bars and places that re don't reopen and these things stay, stay empty, you've got empty buildings, you've got, you're going to have, the government's going to have less money to spend on infrastructure. So, you know, we, we want to highlight the risk that this, this, can, this, this, this brings, um, yeah. uh, empty buildings, you know, become uh, absolute sources and harbor uh, areas for harborage for all sorts of pests. You know, even things like infrastructure, so more potholes in roads can lead to yeah. more stagnant water hanging around, yeah, leads to mosquito problems. And, all these. Yeah. and we, and we at Cepa are sort of saying, okay, then let's let's think about this. Let's think what what the potential is, um, uh, and make the various um, uh, relevant organisations across Europe aware of it, um, and make them aware that we're aware of it, so yeah. they can think about it more. Um, and again, that will be more documentation. We'll be publishing that. It'll be on the website, mm -hmm. be able to look at that. And these are things that we're sending yeah. through to the EU as well. Yeah. Um, it's all and, about how we can help. And in addition to that, I've seen you uh, posted um, a link to CIPA's website where uh, the Spaniards um, published, um, uh, I think it was a memorandum of understanding or something like that, or um, uh, and how to uh, on disinfection. And that will be my next big oh, yeah. Yeah. question for you. Um, what I mean, a lot of the companies I've seen uh, a lot of posts of Rendicale and many other uh, um, good um, uh, pest control companies in the market that are now offering and marketing a very, very strongly disinfectant services against viruses for surfaces, for you know, offices uh, in the food industry, etc. So, my question would be basically, how do you get along with disinfection? Do you do it? Did you uh, collect any experience with it? Um, and how do you see disinfection, which always has been a part of uh, pest control? If you look back 30 years' time, everybody was a pest control and disinfectant, as you know, from the from the uh, from the uh, um, uh, how they were brought up from the what's the word. Uh, apprenticeship basically <laughs> and uh, so basically everybody as a pest control manager was a disinfectant back in the days does that get kind of a revival what do you think yeah um i mean as, as a business as a registered business my business as most pest control business probably are in the uk it's registered as pest control and disinfection that's what it's called but yeah, um, as a, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we've got the, net, the, the skills within the workforce to carry out that work um, to the correct standards. Um, this, the, the, again, I, I talked about it earlier. I think it's important that, that any business that's out there that's carrying out this work or capable of carrying out this work um, uh, is, is sensitive in the way that it markets itself. Yeah. Um, we, it shouldn't be, and I have to say, I've seen some quite um, uh, aggressive marketing on the basis of um, uh, um, uh, I know. probably overstepping the mark in terms of yeah. uh, in terms of using this COVID to their advantage. It's really something that um, fear I, sounds I good, right? Fear is a good motivation for a sale. Yeah, you, yeah, right? yeah, but but. Fit, 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 fit. I remember going back years ago to my training, and it was all about you know uh, you, you look in terms of sales and, and um, um, you know and, and selling um, uh, solutions to problems and uh, you know look, looking at uh, that don't don't uh, uh, don't uh, and one of the key ones was don't sell on fear because fear is a very short term um, uh, uh, um, leads to a very short-term sale and doesn't build long-term relationships because the fear subsides. Yeah. And if you've gone in there and you've drummed up fear within your client base in order to, uh, excuse me, in order to obtain a quick sale, mm. um, that may come and bite you later down the line you know, when people sit back and realize that actually they feel that they've been taken yeah, advantage yeah. of over that. Um, See, but having said that, um, yeah, having said that, disinfection, um, uh, from what I understand, and I stress I'm no expert on this, is uh, another important part of fighting um, this pandemic, uh, and, 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 and is a uh, useful, um, uh, not useful, that's the wrong word, an important part of fighting this pandemic. Um, yeah. And uh, and if you can do it properly and do it safely and do it well, then um, and you've got the staff that are, that are trained and willing to do it, then obviously it's a service that, you know, is out there and you should be able to provide. Um, which is why I, I pointed people because I saw a lot of people that previously perhaps 
hadn't been carrying out this disinfection work and had suddenly seen it as a, a, as mm. whether it's it whether they've done it and I'm sure mm. most have done it completely genuinely um, thinking this is a good thing to offer and a, and a right thing to offer well there's that protocol that's been written by the Spaniards which um, and Spanish Association uh, yeah. which I think if people take the time to read is very thorough um, and um, I would suggest that as I have done that that, that, that anybody that isn't 100 percent familiar with it but wants yeah. to get the service. I had a look at it too, and I think it's ex extremely competent. Absolutely. Uh, for me personally, you know, it's uh, it's funny that um, seeing disinfection, um, uh, you know, on all sorts of social social medias and websites of, of companies that we know since decades, uh, which have never been offering a disinfection officially. So, but um, for our own business, um, you know, I don't I don't want to uh, uh, throw the first uh, rock when I'm sitting in a glass building, um, because we we've kind of also experienced that. Um, you know, we also have the same clientele as you. You know, with our service service business um, and with our product company. Our service business focuses on food manufacturing mainly, but also we have a couple of, you know, um, government buildings or schools or, um, you know, smaller restaurants and shops, and they asked us for disinfectant solutions. So basically, uh, we, all of us, um, uh, you know, we have, uh, luckily we have the staff that are professional uh, and trained disinfectants. So they, they basically trained the rest of the company and we uh, bought new stock of disinfectant uh, um, uh, solutions and, and sprayers and all that and um, really had like probably the last I want to say one and a half months two months we spent a lot of our time educating ourselves on how to perform correct disinfectant um, on, on surfaces and, and for the air and for the for industry clients and it's really it's not that um, if you ask me it's not that easy to really uh, um, get the perfect solution going in, in the uh, short period of time because there's so much you can do wrong. For instance, if you use um, a disinfectant with ethanol or a uh, high percentage of alcohols in it, you leave, um, you know, if, if you spray it, uh, uh, you fog it, uh, it's basically a high risk of um, uh, catching fire or explosions. And, um, you know, you, you're not able to um, use the let's say, um, allow people to get back to work and there's the side you fogged for at least a day or two days. So it's always risky and uh, you have to dig deep. So that's why we chose, by the way, to end that story, um, uh, disinfectant without ethanol or alcohols. Um, but mm -hmm. it's for us, it was a completely new experience. You know, we didn't know all of that, like or at least 90% of the company didn't, like uh, of the staff, uh, three months back uh, from today. Um, and we had to really turn around our ship and, and get used to um, a new demand that we face in Germany, but also um, trying to, not only fulfill the demand, but see it as a chance because in the end we're um, paying uh, or we are, we're having staff uh, which we're responsible for and people that, that are also have to you know pay their bills, et cetera, and their mortgages. So we, we have, as entrepreneurs, we do have some responsibilities as you yourself have too. So we decided to not just you know piggyback basically uh, on, on that development or use it um, for the wrong intentions, but build it as a new business let's say, um, a segment, um, which hopefully is going to last due to our uh, expectation for the next two, three years because people's sensitivity changed. So um, it's for us, it's, it's really entrepreneurial. It's a huge challenge because uh, it's doing something uh, from, from scratch, basically, uh, within uh, a very short period of time. So, uh, yeah, interesting times, really. I don't know. Did you experience mm -hmm. something like the same? Well, yeah, I, I think when you've, if you've got equipment on the shelves, gathering dust, ULV machines, foggers, etc., mm -hmm. that clearly have a use um, uh, beyond what you may have used them for, um, it does seem uh, uh, it does seem rather tragic that they remain on the shelves. So, yeah. so I think that if if you've got um, uh, if you've got that equipment out there, but you haven't got this, the necessary skills or desire to carry out that work, then um, if you know people that, that can do it and, and, and are after that equipment or need it, then it's probably um, uh, um, uh, a very philanthropic gesture maybe to offer that, that, that equipment out, out to people to use. Um, I've certainly done that. You know, we, have, we, we, we took a business decision that we weren't going to go out and actively promote um, mm. carrying out disinfections on there, largely because um, we haven't done it. Um, it's not something that we that, that we can profess that we're extremely skilled at. Having said that, um, if we get clients that come to us, as long as we make it clear about what our limitations are, what our knowledge are, and we say, look, this is the protocols we're going to follow, 
and we can go back to the Spanish protocol. We use that. Mm-hmm. Um, then, then you know, then 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 we're happy to do it. Yeah. Um, but what what as I said earlier, what what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go out there aggressively selling a, a disinfection service, particularly yeah, yeah, using no, the sort of fear the fear tactics. And 100%. and I think anybody who does that is is mm. is frankly disgraceful. That uh, hundred percent. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Last but not least, Henry, uh, we're speaking about uh, speaking via Zoom right now, video telecommunication. Uh, did your work change a lot? Do you do a lot of lot more uh, digital uh, or telecom video conference or anything like that? Or, I mean, I've, I've seen a funny post on LinkedIn that said, "Who drove the change within your business? Uh, your CEO, your CTO, your CIO, or COVID nineteen? <laughs> and basically, yeah. COVID nineteen yeah. was the driver, the the force majeure that kind of pushed digitization." on too many companies so how do you experience that and what do you see as a trend in pest control oh yeah well yeah listen i mean I, you know i'm uh, I, i'm old school i like <laughs> to look somebody in the eyes face to face and for me that won't ever change um uh, uh but having said that obviously um these i mean you know we're all familiar with this sort of system um and i think um getting used to it uh um, it's easy when it's one to one. It's not a problem. When 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 you get large ones where we do with SEPA, for instance, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, where you have maybe fourteen or fifteen people on there, they serve a purpose. Yeah. Um, but they're not the answer. Um, I'm afraid for me, uh, it, it's it's still I, I still like that that that, that <laughs> interaction. So will it change us? Will will I will I change? Will we use this? this sort of um, uh, digital method of communicating more and more inevitably we will whether we'd have covid or not you know it, it, it's 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 going to take more i think personally speaking taking covid out of it for a moment i think that for me um the the, the biggest issue that we have as a as a species on this planet as we're probably aware is climate change mm. um and, and um the one of the biggest pollu- one of the biggest contributors to, to, to climate change is, is 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 global travel, particularly air travel, um, and I think there will become more pressure on certainly bigger organisations, uh, you know, the multinationals over time, um, where they've spent however many years, you know, flying people backwards and forwards first class. Uh, I, I think that that pressure will. Um, Will will gradually drive this kind of uh, uh, of technology even more, and I think the international business travel side of things will probably see a bigger change than smaller medium enterprises like myself. Uh, mm-hmm. Will be my take on it. But, um, 100% yeah. agree. Yeah, it's 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 you know in the end it's it's all good for something, and then uh, if that you know if COVID nineteen uh, um, uh, helps us you know within our perception of of some things um, uh, within the past ten years that were properly uh, priced or correct in form of uh, pricing uh, uh, prices that we have to pay in form of uh, climate uh, change or whatever. I think it's, it's at least it changes our perception of some things uh, to a better. So um, Henry, uh, thank you very much. Also on the outlook for pest control, I think we're still in a very good position to be performing pest management. I think it's still a perfect sector to be in, uh, which we're very, you know, even in those times, sometimes, you know, in pest control, where well, everybody reacts like you're in pest control, it's ugh, just disgusting. Uh, but but now that um, you know, only very few sectors, in my honest opinion, are um, assigned as key sectors or industries, and are now being um, <clears throat> respected to be more important for um, us humans. Uh, I think pest control being one of them, uh, we can be very proud. And you know, in contrast to some uh, sort of jobs that were more, um, uh, I don't know, maybe more thought after or had more respect, uh, people being more proud as, I don't know, BMW or salesman or working at Google or whatever, uh, now is facing um, or is, is getting another view on, on uh, segments or sectors like pest control that are actually inherent to yeah, the system. Yeah. I personally am very proud to be working. I, 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 I say, I, I, well, I totally echo that. I think, look, um, the world is built on real people doing real jobs. At least it should be. Um, and maybe this has been... A wake-up call for a lot of people um, uh, to, to to that extent, mm-hmm. um, but for all those private equity investors out there that are worried, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I uh, I've been doing this now for nearly thirty years, seen at least this is probably the third recession that I've seen in the industry, and um, 
I can absolutely guarantee to a large extent the pest management industry is recession proof. So we will be back um, and we will be fine. Yeah. Funnily so, enough, uh, thank you. Sir. Within our service business, just to end that story, 2008, the last big financial crisis, uh, was one of the best years in, in company history. So uh, I totally agree. Everybody that, that listens to that, uh, apply for a job in pest control, uh, buy some stocks of the big stock uh, uh, companies that are listed in the stock exchange. And uh, Henry, thank you so much for the talk. Um, 